Uh, it's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. We are back again for um, Summer House Martha's Vineyard Season 2, Episode 2, and this is called Jealousy, Jobs, and Judgment. And so far, so, good. so far, so good. I'm loving this show. It, it's going very, very well so far. So, without further ado, let's get into the review. Um, so, where we left off, because they kind of did a little bit of a recap. Um, of what happened last time. So they're still on the yacht, twerking, having a good time, like, eh, 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 you know, doing their thing. Um, day two of their time at the house. And Jordan and Jasmine, they both decided after they had that talk that they're going to agree to disagree and just try to move forward with a friendship. Um, it's not going to be the same as what it was before, but they need to figure out what the friendship will be. Kind of what I mentioned in the last review. Um, and then after that, we did actually speak to Bria briefly. and We find out that Bria and Simon are still together. They're actually doing better than ever. Um, we also found out that Bria lived in Germany for a year with him. And they're still just doing the distance thing right now because she had to move back. Um, to New York for, for a job. So they're still together, and it sounds like he'll be back. So we'll get to see Simon again. Um, and But they're doing much better. And then we also see that um, they're back at the house at this point when they're having this discussion. And then, that, then we see Amir talking to Preston. And here we see that Amir's asking how Preston's really, really doing. And then we find out more about Preston and his string relationship with his dad. Um, even though things were better, it never really was good because his dad could not accept that he's gay. So, um, because his dad kind of made one of those comments of, I didn't raise my son to be gay. And... Preston's like, well, you didn't raise me because, you know, he didn't because of all the things that are going on. So um, Preston still, for the most part, is like, you know, I don't really know how to process it, but I think I'm okay. And thanks, Amir, for kind of you know, like checking in. And I forgot last season, Amir was a little bit of the narrator too last season, but this episode especially, he was narrating. And I forgot how funny Amir is. He is shady. <laughs> but um, I think I like this version of Amir a lot more because he has a girlfriend and he's on his best behavior. And I kind of like the fact that Amir is slightly ditzy. But in the, like a charming good way. <laughs> and he, he knows it though. And he owns it. Like... He's, he's he's growing on me. I didn't really like Amir last season, but this season, I'm liking him a little bit more. Relationship Amir is greater than single Amir. We'll just say that. <laughs> and then they also recap that Nick is gone with the win, a.k.a. he's already really, really drunk. And so he's taking a nap trying to rally to get back so that they can go back to drinking later on that evening. And based off of Nick, it's not that, not that surprising. Nick, literally, he has a runner's body, so he's a runner. So there's not much meat on him. So, yeah, it's not going to probably take much for him to get Liddy. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand why anyone is so surprised. Um, so, and also, too, I think for the most part, outside of probably this show, he doesn't seem like someone who drinks a lot. Um so clearly some of the people on the cast are party animals and others are not. Um, but they, they're all turning it on for the cameras, basically. Anyway, so Nick's taking a nap. They're kind of giving him a hard time about it. And then Amir, Nick, and Alex are recapping the conversation that Alex... And by the way, apologies for last video... I think I just woke up. I don't know what was happening. I kept calling Alex Alice, and I don't know why. It's a thing I do all the time. It's like uh, it's like a 
Randomly in my head, when I see Alex, I sometimes say Alice and vice versa. So apologies if I have that kind of a slip up, but that's, I, I, I knew I did it right away when I saw the playback and I had to do the editing, but I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to re-record. So I just made a correction. I, I knew I obviously did that, um, but it's one of those things, some words for me, because I think I'm slightly dyslexic and I think I always have been, but. That happens with me. But anyway, apologies. So Alex um, is kind of recapping with the guys about how the conversation with him and Summer went. And from what I'm gathering, I I'll share my thoughts on how I felt about Summer towards the end of this episode because this was another episode where Summer was center of the drama. Um, but from... Alex, um, uh, um, you know, from his take, he's saying that she's clingy. And, um, and then Nick gets, tries to give Alex some very, like, not, um, very bad advice and kind of toxic to try to rebeat. And everyone's like, what does that mean? And basically to have sex with her one more time. And, Again, this is what reminds me, uh, Nick is me the ex. <laughs> I was concerned how long it was going to take for me to get the ex from him. It took one episode and now we're already back to me getting the ex. And this is a conversation that continues on throughout the episode too. So this is also getting revisited. Anyway, so let's go on to the next scene here. So that night, they're turning up and they're deciding they're going to do decade night. I believe this was Joelle's idea because Joelle is definitely one of those girls that likes themes. And she even shares in her confessional. That's one of the things that kind of helped her break out of her shell was to like be able to dress up and do different things. So they're doing decade night and they're doing like a mini contest and it's cute. So, um, and they're judging it. So first we have Jasmine. Jasmine is a 50s housewife. And <laughs> Amir shades her. He's like, I thought we're supposed to be dressing like something that we're not already. And then they recap how Silas treated Jasmine last season. And even how Jasmine tried to present herself to the world last season that she pretty much is a kept woman. Which is basically kind of like a 50s housewife. <laughs> So the shade landed, and I, I kind of chuckled when I got that. And then um, from there, we see that Preston is dressed like someone from the um, movie Juice. And apparently, I need to check to see how young this cast is, because the fact that some of these people that are on this cast don't be knowing about iconic black cultural stuff. I look at them like they're crazy. So Shanice does not know Jews. She didn't understand the reference. And I'm confused. I'm very confused. That's not the last time that happens though. So within this segment, <laughs> within this piece. So then um, Summer is a 70s flower girl. And then Nick is author Ash. And no one knows who he is, which again, disappointment and literally what I just said right there. How do these, how do these people on the cast not know who these people are? Some of y'all need to go back to school and take some history lessons, like black history lessons. I'm very confused why y'all know how, who some of these people are. It kind of bothers me. I'm not even going to hold you. I'm like, what? But it's funny, though, because um, Nick literally kind of dresses like Author Ash sometimes just in general. So no one got it because Nick kind of looks like Author Ash. And they did it side by side. And I was like, yeah, he kind of does look like Author Ash, though, actually. He just is missing the fro. <laughs> by the way, if you don't know who Author Ash is, he is a tennis icon. And actually, one of the tennis stadiums in New York is named the Arthur Ashe, like, arena or wherever. I forgot what they call them. Sta I forgot what they call places where you play tennis at, like, bigger places where you play tennis at. 
He's like the black trailblazer for tennis. There would be no Venus or Serena without Arthur Ashe. Okay. Like, my dad would have never played tennis if it wasn't for Arthur Ashe. I want to play tennis. Oh, yeah, but side note, I actually used to play tennis. So that's the reason why I know who Arthur Ashe is. I've known him for a very long time. Like, child, I was playing a lot of tennis back in, like, the 80s and 90s. Um, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, so it just I'm just kind of confused why they didn't know who Arthur Ashe is. But moving on, I know, I'm kind of, oh, I'm hammering down the point. But then Shanice was just kind of like a drunk girl. She wasn't really dressed as anything. And what we find out later on, it makes sense why Shanice wasn't really dressed as anything. We'll find out later on why. And so, but Shanice kind of, again, is doing her thing she does, which is leading with her body and twerking. And Bria's like, okay, well, I guess you're a, you're a working girl. <laughs> and went over her head. And I'm just like, Shanice, girl, do you not? And Preston is cracking up because like, nah, Shanice not knowing what a working girl is. <laughs> and they're like, they called you a hoe. They called you a prostitute. <laughs> and the fact, because I mean, they literally had to spell this out to her. She did not get it. She didn't get what a working girl was. I'm like, wow. Um, anyway. But Shanice knew that Bria was kidding. Um, <laughs> and then Bria was, um, was giving early 2000s dress from Jenny from the block. And actually, you know, was looking like, looking like um, Jennifer Lopez from the Love Don't Cost a Thing video. She was kind of literally dressed like that. Um, and then Amir said he was 2010. He was basically dressed like Nick. Like Nick from the cast. Yeah, he really wasn't dressed up either. But anyway, long story less long, Preston won. Um, Nick was in a way that he didn't win. Because it actually was a decent costume. Only thing is he probably should have just had a tennis racket too. I don't understand why he didn't get a tennis racket. But I don't know. I was confused about the um, theme night. That do they not know that they're going to do the theme night ahead of time to get stuff? Because the guys were even kind of. Um, Alex made a comment of. Yeah I kind of wish we would have time to like go and get stuff. So that we could do this. So it seemed like. This theme night was kind of put together at the last minute type thing. But anyway. So then they all get cleaned up and get changed. And then they come back. Um, a lot of them to get ready to go into the jacuzzi or go in the pool. Because they have a pool and jacuzzi and all that. Because, I mean, they have a decent house, of course. And um, so a lot of them change their bikinis and whatnot. And then we go on to playing another game called Spill the Tea. And child, in this game, I spilled the tea. Tea was spilled. So, um, it first starts with Shanice getting a card and everyone takes a shot. And, um, well, everyone's supposed to be taking a shot, but no one wants to take a shot. Everyone's like, no, we've been drinking like all day. We're just going to take a sip of our drink. And Shanice is like, you guys are lame. You guys are lame. And... This also comes up a little bit later on about how Shanice handles things. Um, it definitely comes up later on. And yeah, I have thoughts on it, but we'll get to it. So then somehow the next um, card is who's the worst dresser in the group. And Summer, without hesitation, says she, Shanice is. And everyone pretty much agrees. And... Shanice finds out and she is super upset. I mean, she is on 10 about it. And she, you know, kind of cusses everyone out. See, like, y'all effing suck. And then goes upstairs and just, she literally starts crying. And everyone's like, why was the reaction the reaction? Everyone was literally confused. And we find out that Shanice lost her job. So she is literally living off her savings. And the reason why she's at the house is because this was already a pre-planned commitment before all that happened. She, her job made her relocate. And shortly after she relocated, they 
got rid of her. I would be pissed. <laughs> Considering I literally had a similar situation that, I mean, I'm kind of going through a little bit. I don't know how I handle that. I'm remote, so for me, clearly, it's not as much of an issue. And also, I kind of bounced back, so it's not a big deal. But, and I don't know in her world, did she have a severance or not? From the way it sounds, it sounds like not so much. Um, but anyway, so she's crying. and She's literally like, I can't afford to buy new clothes. Like, I'm like broke. Like, she's crying, crying. So her being the worst dress, she's pissed because she kind of can't really help that right now. And we find out that Summer knows about her not having a job. And so she feels like Summer's kind of throwing that in her face. And um, while all this is happening, Noella, who is brought, who's brought onto the show by Summer, I'm learning she's brought onto the show by Summer, but she's not really friends with Summer. She's getting to know Summer. I don't, Noella clearly doesn't really know Summer like that. So she's getting to know Summer through this whole thing. Because you know how reality TV shows are when they're like, oh, a friend brought me on. They don't have time. They don't really know each other like that. And Noelle's pretty, Noelle's pretty much like observing Summer's behavior. And she's like, girl, what? Because number one, Shanice and Summer, they're building a friendship. And so it was really odd that this is supposedly supposed to be your friend, but you threw her under the bus of being the worst dress. Um, not knowing the extra sauce that we know, okay? And then also, too, Bria went directly up there. So we found all this out because Bria went up there to check on her. And then Noella went up there to check on her. Summer did not go not one time up there to check on her. And she's the one who said it. So, um, and while all this is happening, and also side note, so when um, Alex was talking to the boys about Summer, he said that he saw some things about her outside of her doing the picture thing and whatnot that just gave her, gave him pause, like some red flags. But because he was leading with that, he wasn't paying attention. Um, so this makes me think and wonder. I don't know. And, and I, I want to know what your thoughts are, but I don't think I like Summer. <laughs> Based off this whole episode, the way I view her, I don't view her very nicely. Um, her communication skills kind of sucks. And she's very passive aggressive. And um, those are people who I get along with the least. I do not like passive aggressive people. <laughs> the way for me to not F with you as a person is you be very passive aggressive and nice nasty. And from this episode, she's giving me she's nice nasty. And she's the center of a lot of drama already in episode two. But it's a lot of unnecessary drama. Anyway, so we'll, we'll, we'll move on. We'll move on. So Shanice goes back downstairs after she gets a pet talk. You know, Bri Bria is the only one that knows why Shanice is truly upset. Everyone else thinks it's just about Summer's delivery. Not the whole scope of why Shanice is truly upset. So everyone else is still confused for the most part why Shanice is upset. Now Jordan, we find out later on, knows that there's probably more to it than what is being said because Jordan knows Shanice and knows that she doesn't usually, she usually waits until it builds up before she says things. And um, again, it's going to come up about how Shanice does not handle conflict well. And 
is kind of telling of what happened with her last season when we found out about her and the ex-boyfriend. It seems like that's a trend with her. She does not handle conflict well. So I'm wondering if we're going to see that more since she's on the show this season more. So anyway, Summer asks, like, is everything okay? Like, but just very nonchalant, like, not even think, like, treating her like she's just, like, someone she just met. She's, like, not even treating her like a friend. She's like, is everything okay? And, um, yeah, Shanice brushes it off and doesn't really address it. And then they all go on to twerking and listening to music. And Shanice states that she doesn't want to talk about it and doesn't really want to, like, deal with everything's going on with her life right now. So she's just going to dance and move on. And, again, this, I'm seeing real quickly, and now it's start, I'm starting to put the pieces together of what could have possibly happened with her and her ex. And also, Shanice needs therapy. Okay, let me just call let me just call a thing a thing. It's very clear to me she's not in therapy. And even how she says something the next scene, the next day, she's not in therapy. And she needs therapy. She needs some serious therapy. And she does this thing that I used to do when I was younger where I bottle things up and then I explode. And I have a feeling that's what she does. It's and sweeps under the rug, sweeps under the rug until it becomes too much. And she really needs to stop doing that. And again, I'll go back to how I feel about Summer, but Summer didn't handle any of this well. Um, but anyway, so moving on, they're still partying. Nick is partying with the girls as they're twerking. And Shanice, by the way, She's still doing the Shanice thing she does where titties are out, literally. She just is topless, dancing around, being like this wild girl. And basically, Amir excuses himself right away. He's like, I cannot be, I, I can't, I can't be there. <laughs> because Amir has a girlfriend. He's trying to be respectful of his relationship with Nally. So he excuses himself and he goes and talks to Nally. And Natalie at first is like, you're acting kind of weird. And he's like, why do you think I'm being weird? He's like, well, your message was a weird message. And he's just like, well, I just kind of wanted to get out of the room I was in. And he actually kind of did break down what room he was in. It's like, well, it sounds like you want to be in there. And he's like, no, I'm actually kind of irritated that like Nick wants to be in there. Which, okay, two thoughts of this. I do find it weird that Amir is so invested in how Nick behaves. But if you know how Amir is from last season and really know how he is, he's very much, um, at least the way he presents himself, he's very much a gentleman. And he even kind of called out even last season that he does not like how Nick moves in a relationship. And he's not the only one that thinks that. I even think it too, to a certain degree, but I'm a viewer. Um, and uh, uh, other people in the cast think that too, and it, it gets mentioned. But anyway, so we see though, while all this is happening, Jordan pushes like Nick off of her, like literally pushes Nick off of her. And, um, okay. I still think Jordan has a tendency of overreacting. Because she was like this last season. She does overreact. She puts 20 on 10. Um, but I do think that Nick was handsy. And has been handsy. But the aggression of how... she, Because the way she pushed him, it looked like she was mushing him. I was like, girl! Why are you treating Nick like he's a stranger, though? He's a tiny dude. It's not. It doesn't take that much to... to to get him off of you. But, you know, I'm not there, so I can't tell, but just the way it looked on the camera, I was like, girl, you had it some force when you pushed him off of you. Anyway, so, 
But before the night ends, we find out that Shanice thinks that um, Summer has something against her and states just that to Bria and thinks that, like, um, basically states that um, Summer is jealous of Shanice. And because nothing got resolved. And I still want to know where she thinks this is coming from. She did mention it was because, like, Shanice gets guys, but the guys she'd be getting because Shanice got a roster. She's got herself a roster. She's a single girl. She's living her best life, and she got her a roster. But the roster that she got, they're not uh, they're not brogies. And um, apparently, Summer made a comment, how are you getting these guys? And that comment does sound like hating. That does sound like, that sounds like some jealousy. That sounds like hate. Because why, as a woman, are you asking me how I'm doing, how I'm living my life? How come you ain't just doing what you do? I don't know. If, if a woman was to ask me how I do what I do, I'm going to be like, oh, you're a hater. <laughs> and side note, I had someone who's no longer a friend to me did something like that kind of sim like, uh, like towards the end of 2022. They were pocket watching. As soon as I was like, oh, you are pocket watching. Because I had a mishap where something, they ended up having to pay something for me, basically. Um, you know, what happens. And then they went to this whole tangent of there trying to figure out how do I afford my lifestyle. And I was like, oh. Friends don't say that to other friends. And I caught it. Just in case they're watching, I just want them to know I caught that. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so now it's day three. And child, I don't know what it is about this show. This brings out a little bit of the shadiness to me. Because <laughs> I found that in the last review, I was kind of shady too. I was a little bit, I was a little zesty, a little zest zesty. Um, I don't know if it's just because I, I'm in a better place than I've been in a while. I don't know what it is. But anyway, we're going to move on. <laughs> day three. It's a rainy day, so everyone's kind of stuck inside um, at the moment. And Nick and Joelle, they're playing um, chess while Preston is FaceTiming his boyfriend. Jordan's talking to her dad. and We find out she has a hair deal because we also find out that Jordan has alopecia. Um, and it's hereditary. And um, so she doesn't have any, like, she's, and she's in the middle of having a really bad episode right, right at the moment. And we find out that she didn't know she really, she knew it was hereditary, but what kicked it off was when she was modeling, one of the modeling gigs that she had made her get a relaxer, and it killed her hair, and it never really recovered. And the way I have a fear of that kind of a situation, given I don't do the relaxer anymore, but um, for those who have been following my channel, um, y'all already know I do do protective hairstyles to my head. But at the very beginning, because I was new to it, I was putting some of those protective hairstyles on a little too tight. And I noticed that, ooh, Girl, if you don't stop, you're going to lose your edges. So I noticed that was starting to happen. Like, there, it's not gone, but I, my edges were thinning out. So that's the other reason why, side note, I haven't been doing the protective styles as much. Because last year, I did a lot of them. And that was a lesson learned to not do as many. Um, and just a kind of a PSA, ladies. Um, if you're going to do protective hairstyles, make sure your hair is healthy. If it's not healthy, do not do them. Do not do them too tight. Make sure you keep your hair moisturized. Don't keep them in for too long. Still wash your hair. Um, now I did most of those things. I actually also used to do dry. I also have dry shampoo that I used to, so that I'm always working it out. But for me, the, the washing the hair part and the moisturizing part wasn't as much of the problem because I never kept the hairstyles in long enough for it to be a problem. Um, 
I'm, I get bored too easily. Like, I think the longest I had protective hairstyle in my hair in recent years was maybe like six weeks. And I don't even do that often. Um, usually I think I maybe only keep it in for a month. And even, I'm doing a protective hairstyle again soon. But I'm, I feel like I'm only going to have that for maybe three weeks. Maybe four weeks tops. Because I think the third week is already going to start not looking as good. But anyway, um, kind of got distracted there. Um, so yeah, we do find that out. Um, and then also, um, some of the group, because it's kind of like not a good day to really go out and do stuff, some of the group's going to go to the gym while the others are going to go to brunch. So Preston, Jordan, and Summer are going to brunch. And on their way there, they're, they discuss Nick's behavior. I mentioned Nick's behavior is going to be a, a discussion. And, um, yeah, both Summer, they kind of recapped the night before where, some, where um, Nick was kind of being handsy towards Summer and um, Jordan with the picture. And Preston's like, yeah, we, we're noticing it. Like, it's a very obvious thing that Nick does. But it seems like it really only happens when he's drunk. It's not something he does when he's sober. Um, but it still needs to be discussed. And um, so then while that's happening, on the other side, the rest of the group is doing the gym thing. They actually found a lady. They went to a lady's house who owns a gym in their house. And it's like kettlebells. It's giving kind of like a um, CrossFit type situation. So they're getting to work, getting it in. We also find out Bria was a was a gymnast. So she's she's strong. Um, which makes sense now. Because <laughs> she's such a Tasmanian devil. Now it makes all sense. She's a tiny, all muscle, probably kind of girl. Um, anyway, so after that, after they get done working out, of course, discussions are had on their side. Really, really on both sides, the Shanice and um, Summer situation come up. Shanice is stating to the group, like, yeah, I don't like her delivery. And she kind of alludes that there's other things going on with her and Summer. And because Shanice still isn't saying everything and why everything is bothering her, I'm going to hold you. Shanice is making it sound like Summer's a mean girl. And mind you, Alex is here too. And Alex is like, I don't, I didn't see that from her, but if that's her, that's not really good. And I don't know if that's her or not, but the fact that Summer's actions do not match her words, it's not helping. Um, but Shanice is not helping the situation. She's adding some gasoline to the fire that's already brewing. And so on the other side, Summer's still really clueless of why Shanice was so upset with her about the not dressing comment. And... I'm confused. And then she's also stating to Preston and Jordan that like, it just seems like with Shanice, the relationship's very surface. So she doesn't know enough to know why she would feel that way. Because she doesn't really know much about Shanice. And I'm a little weird about that. Because why? I don't know. Because it's like there's, the way both of them are describing things is completely different. Shanice shared, so according to Shanice, she says she shared with Summer about her job situation. So that seems like y'all are close enough where she shared that with you, number one. Number two, it seems like Shanice doesn't feel safe enough to do say much to you past surface because of your actions. Um, because then Summer tries to allude to like, well, everything with her is very surface. She's very guarded. 
And But if you're not allowing Shanice's space to really be open like that, she's not going to do that. And even Jordan kind of chimed in. She's like, yeah, Shanice isn't going to just open up to you right away. And I think Summer's a type of person who thinks people should do that. And the thing is, though, I don't trust people who think that way. Because it makes me think, why do you need to know stuff about me like that right away? Are you going to use it against me? Because so far it looks like that is the type of person she... It, I don't know. Um, this this episode did not look good on Summer's behalf. I'm just going to say that. Um, Summer is... I don't know what to think about her. I really don't. And... Um, but Shanice does say she doesn't want to address the complete reason... She pretty much, Denise is not going to address complete reason to the group, but she is going to, she does want to have the conversation with Summer, but clearly she wants to have it on a one-on-one -on -one situation, which is the correct way of doing things. And while all that, while everything's being said, Joelle's just kind of, um, so while all this is happening, Bria's just kind of there on the side because Bria knows the whole thing. Bria knows the whole tea what's going on, but she's keeping her mouth shut. She's like, okay. And then also, then we go over back to Preston, um, Summer, and Jordan. And Preston asks about how was the sex with her and Alex. And we find out Alex wasn't really hitting on anything. And this is another reason why it gives me pause when it comes to Summer. Why are you disclosing all this information? Because Alex was asked the same thing about Summer, and he, he kept it cute. But yet, Summer keeps stating it was nothing, it means nothing. And Jordan even presses her about it again, like, you sure? Like, y'all good? She's like, no, it's just a situation ship. It wasn't anything. But like, to me... You're naming it a situationship, and Alex didn't even give it a name. You, I feel like she wanted more of it than what she got. I think she wanted to be like a power couple with Alex, but that's not what happened there. Because Alex was not going to give her that kind of rhythm. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think Summer can be trusted. <laughs> because even how she's kissing and telling, like, it's... It's a character thing. And then, even with Joelle, she's like, apparently, so on the other side, they're reiterating everything that happened with Alex and Summer. And Joelle, this time, heard that Summer slept with Alex. And she's like, what? And then, and then everyone's like, where were you at the dinner? And we saw where she was at with the dinner. She was the only one that was killing the lobster tail. She was not listening to any of them and was destroying the lobster tail and crab and crab legs. <laughs> and I don't blame her. If the food's good, eat it, girl. I mean, I, I would have been doing the same thing. And so that's making Joelle looking at Summer funny, too, because she's like, why would you think I'm someone who would want to sleep with your leftovers? That's weird. And we're friends. Weird. Is weirdo behavior. I don't think I don't think Summer's a self I don't think Summer's a girl's girl. That's what I'm getting. I think we're gonna find out more about her. And I don't think it's gonna be good. But anyway. So Summer's still saying that there's nothing between her and Alex and it meant nothing. But again. Her actions do not match her words. Okay, so they all get back from their respective places. Joelle actually goes to talk to Summer about Alex. And Summer is so weird about the whole thing. She tries to actually flip it during, um, they don't call it confessional, they call it the truth room, where, it's basically confessional though, where, um, you know, Summer's trying to flip it, say, well, you're the one who was like saying that that's your type and all that stuff. How are you going to be mad at me for me saying go for it then? And I'm just like, girl. 
Is the fact that she wasn't honest with her and didn't tell her that she already slept with her for me. She's so now, so Summer is upset that Joelle was all up in the business wanting to know if she slept with him already or not. And it's like, that's just normal girl code stuff. Like you want to know, okay, y'all both might be looking, y'all might both have a, a type. If y'all both have the same type, I'm going to ask you and hope as a girlfriend before anything happens, like, hey, did y'all already do stuff? Because if y'all already did stuff, that gives me the signal that, okay, he's no longer my type. I'm men and blacking that. I'm not going to look at him like that anymore. And the fact that she tried to flip it and turn around and make it seem like it's something else, I'm like, girl, what? With Joelle, we at least knows for the mo for the most part, at least. Okay, I'm going to say it. Maybe I'm biased because of all my AKAs. I, I feel like I wish I, I wish I would have fledged via AKA. Pardon me. <laughs> really wishes I did. But, um... My AKA sisters are usually pretty most. I've never met AKA that's not a girl's girl. I'm just going to say that. Most AKAs are the girliest of girls. Like, not like that. But I mean, like they I've never met an AKA who has not had my back or vice versa. Like. No. So I'm looking at her funny too. Like I'm not not Joelle, but I'm definitely looking at Summer funny because I'm just like Noelle is Noelle's being like very sensible and have have common sense about this. She's like, she basically said, "I don't do that. That's weird." And she's like, "Okay, well if you did, I wouldn't care." And I'm like, "What is wrong with this her with her?" I don't know. If there's just I don't know. It's weird. But oh. I forgot to mention the other thing. So back to the gym scene er, with Shanice. So Shanice is working out and she's like, the gym is my therapy. The gym's my therapy. So my personal trainer knows all, everything. Girl, the gym's not your therapy. Yes, the gym is a self-care thing. That's not your therapy. Your therapist is your therapy. Get some therapy, okay? <laughs> Please go get some therapy. Please. The gym helps. Don't get twisted. As someone who is very much a gym girl and very much someone who runs marathons and everything else, as much as I was running my behind off, it still wasn't therapy. I still need to take my behind to a therapist. And you should too. Okay. PSA, that's all I got to say. Moving on. Okay, so last, the guys do end up, um, Preston does end up talking with the rest of the guys. And they talk to Nick about him being handsy. And he's like, yeah, I probably should. So Nick is really surprised about it because he's the only one that doesn't realize he's handsy. Everyone else is like, yeah, you're handsy when you've been drinking. And according to Nick, he's like, we hang out all the time and they've never said anything to me. And my whole thing is, okay, this is a message to you, Nick, but also all men and maybe some women too, because there are women who are handsy like this too. And it's sometimes really, really annoying when that's a thing. I have an ex roommate who was like that, and it was like, girl, read the room. Um, just because a person doesn't tell you that you're being handsy and you're being a little too much doesn't mean you're not. It's not really comfortable for that person that you're being handsy with for them to have to tell you that. And depending on the situation, especially if drinking's involved as a woman or as someone who might have less power in general than the other person. You don't know how that person is going to react. So instead of like saying something or like doing something, you sometimes just let them do it. It doesn't mean you're comfortable though. And yes, I do think it is weird though. 
feel like Jordan should say something, you know, come to you soberly and say something. But we know how Jordan is based off of last season. That is not really within her comfort zone to do that, number one. Um, and I have no expectations at this point for Summer. <laughs> I'm sorry. This episode just made me view her so differently. Because I see where the jealousy comes from in this episode title. I see where the jobs comes from with this title. But child, I'm judging her. <laughs> That's where the judgment comes from at. I am judging her. It, it, it's coming from me judging her. I ain't gonna hold you. But anyway, that does conclude this episode of Summer's House, Martha's Vineyard, Season 2, Episode 2. Hopefully you enjoyed my review. But please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, a.k.a. The Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.